Hey pals! Today I'm going to talk about thrifting, my rules, my methodology, kind of my overall approach to how I buy stuff secondhand, which is most of what I buy. Uh, I just did a, an Instagram story show and tell of some of the stuff that I recently thrifted. I went when I was in Ohio a couple weeks ago and I also just went with my friend yesterday. And when I go to the thrift store, I, I've sort of curated an approach that really works for me. And I think it needs to be an intentional thing. So I wanna to talk today about what my rules are for myself when I go to the thrift store and just kind of what I look for. And you can take whatever resonates with you and you can leave what doesn't, uh, or maybe this is just entertainment only for you. So first of all, I wanna say that I have worked really hard to develop my own personal style. And I think understanding your own personal style is pretty key to shopping intentionally. Because if you don't know what works best for you and by works best for you i mean what you feel your best in if you don't know that it's hard to be able to narrow it down when it's a thrift store setting where there's just tons of stuff everywhere so first step is understanding your personal style and i have a dress for yourself course where i walk through it's a, it's a mini course it's like maybe one to two hours of watching videos and answering questions in the workbook to help you reflect on your own style. And it has been so impactful for me to be able to understand my personal style because I can shop more intentionally. I'm not wasting money buying things that are trendy and I think will work for me and that I never end up reaching for. Uh, I am also just consuming less I guess less stuff that isn't going to work for me. I probably still buy the same amount of stuff. So if you're interested in the dress for yourself course, I'll drop a link in the in the notes. Um, it's a really great course. I put a lot of love into it. So would love to hear your thoughts if you do end up trying it. So assuming that you've gone through the process of understanding your personal style and personal style is always evolving. I'm always changing. And that's why I constantly go through closet sales and I'm frequently visiting the consignment shops and the vintage stores to offload some of my stuff. So I talk a lot about what's coming in with, you know, sharing my show and tell of the thrift stores or new products that I'm getting um, from slow fashion brands, sustainable brands, inclusive brands, brands whose values I love. I talk about those things on Instagram a lot, but what you're not seeing is kind of how much I'm also offloading. And I also talk about that in the Dress For Yourself course, kind of what to do with the stuff that isn't serving you any longer. And I also talk about that in the free closet clean out guide that I have. So all of that will be linked below. But now that we, let's assume that hypothetical situation us is in control of our own personal style. We have an understanding of what we want. So when I go to the thr thrift store, I understand what my closet gaps are. So do I have a gap in a certain color? Let's say I, I personally have a gap in purple clothing. I have a hard time finding the right shade of purple that I feel really good in. I'm attracted to the lavender that's really popular um, now and has been for a couple of years. Uh, I really like deep purples, but when I put them on my body, I don't feel like myself. So I've purchased a lot of purple stuff and then I quickly get rid of it. So that's a gap in my wardrobe. Um, also the gaps could be things like type of clothing. Like I have a million vintage t-shirts, but I don't have a lot of, let's say tank tops or like sleeveless blouses, for example. Do I want to fill that gap in my wardrobe? Probably not, probably don't need to. Um, but I think understanding what's missing is step number one, because if you're going in with no plan and you're just browsing, you might buy more stuff than you need. And that is fine. But if you're trying to be more intentional about the thrifting process, this is these are my steps. So having a, a wardrobe gap list, having a list on your phone or, or wherever in your in your cute little um, backpack journal if you're one of those people who 
I dream of being. Like I want to be a person who carries a cute little journal and sketchbook in my bag with me and when I do that I never use it and then it's just added weight. So I'm a phone list person. Um, so adding things like are there any craft supp supplies you're looking for? Are there any books that you want to fill in your personal library? I always look for Michael Crichton books because he's my favorite author, which we learned in the last video where I talk about my books. Um, because they were mass produced, so they're pretty easy to find and I just like collecting them. Um, I, I'm also always looking for quilting books because quilting patterns though they're always coming out with new ones, the, the quilt pattern designers, the patterns are still relevant. Like it doesn't matter if that book was published in the 70s, the fabrics might be ugly, but the shapes are still applicable. And I love looking for old books like that or other crafts that you might be interested in. Um, I look for gardening books, uh, picture books about dinosaurs, like illustrated dinosaurs. Obviously we have no real pictures of dinosaurs. <laughs> Um, so yeah, just having a list of things like what are your collections and maybe you don't need that on a list. Um, what kind of projects are you working on? I have this project in mind where I want to get a bunch of basketballs and paint them fun, like me colors, and then attach them to the wall in sort of like a long, um, I have two stories and there's one really tall wall and I want to fill it with basketballs that are colorful. So I have been on the hunt for used kind of in shitty condition basketballs. So that's on my list. Um, I'm always looking for jerseys and sports stuff, vintage t-shirts. So having a list on your phone is really helpful. Um, the next thing, so understanding your wardrobe gaps understanding what you might be looking for helps to create a boundary so that you're not just like looking everywhere and maybe you're not in the mood to look at clothes sometimes i walk in and i'm like i can't be bothered to look through all these racks so then i just go to the books or the home goods stuff um you know do you need vases for a summer backyard barbecue that you're hosting you know when you're thinking about things that are upcoming in your life can any of those things be bought secondhand at the thrift and put them on your list so that you're starting to think about it when you go I find that if I go with the intention of finding one specific thing, I usually don't find it. Um, but if I go with an open mind of like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna explore today? How am I gonna play in this space? I usually find something that's cool. Uh, I also am always looking for old stuff because I personally think that things made many years ago were made with higher quality materials and better craftsmanship than a lot of the stuff that's made now. So I'm always looking for like an old sewing machine or old sewing kits, old books, old frames, things like that. Um, yeah, I just really like to browse. <clears throat> but when it comes to what I decide to buy, that is, is something that I'm pretty picky about. So I'm pretty good, again, because I understand my own personal style and my, and my personal style with my home as well. Um, it doesn't have to be about clothes, but understanding what you like in in your home helps too and you can use some of those same questions uh in the dress for yourself course if you if you are interested in in getting it or have already but maybe that's something that i should consider creating kind of a resource to understanding your interior personal style because it is a little bit different Ooh, i'm noodling i'm excited today i have a lot of ideas today um the sun is shining and i slept well and i ate breakfast so i'm like ah um, okay, back to uh, the clothes and, and what I decide to buy clothes-wise. So I have a good understanding of what colors I like um, because I'm, I'm generally drawn to them uh, immediately when they're on the rack. But I personally really like a lot of solids, um, like these pants that I'm wearing. I don't know if you can see them. Um, I guess we can point to my closet behind me. Uh, I, love, I love solids. Like this is a solid, this is a solid. I don't reach as much for my patterned pieces and I'm learning that about myself and maybe that's like a current evolution of my style. Um, so if it's patterned, it has to be something that is not some close to something that I already have. And I have to be able to envision what I'm gonna wear it with immediately. So I, I got a pair of silk dress pants um, at the thrift yesterday and Immediately, I was like, ooh, I could wear this um, 
to work with a colorful blazer over top or I can pattern mix uh, with a silk blouse over top. And so I immediately thought of how I could wear it, style it. And so I felt okay with buying those patterns. <clears throat> and that brings me to my next point. So, so I guess first understanding, you know, what are your wardrobe staples? Like what are, what do you actually wear versus what you're attracted to? Because a lot of times I think I'm attracted to something and then when it's on my body, I don't like it as much. So again, back to those reflection questions of like, what is my personal style? What do I actually feel good in? <clears throat> but then uh, I mentioned that those pants were silk. I tried to pay attention to the labels. So looking at what materials the clothes are made out of, I really like to focus on linen, cotton or silk for or wool for my personal preference. So it's sort of those more natural materials, I guess. I will buy polyester. I'm not opposed or spandex. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but it has to be old, I think, because I want the pieces that I'm investing in, even if it's just a couple bucks, to last me. I want them to last multiple washes and multiple wears and be an active part of my wardrobe. And I just feel like things that we see in the thrift store, like a lot of Forever 21 pieces or Sheen pieces, those aren't made well. And so they're made of, of you know, crappier materials and they're probably gonna fall apart after a couple of washes. So I tend not to buy fast fashion at the thrift store. And also it's not any cheaper at the thrift store to buy fast fashion. So if you're gonna do it, and I understand that people need to for budgetary reasons, but personally, I think I would rather save up a little bit longer and invest in a higher quality piece because the life cycle of that piece will be so much better than fast fashion. And um, I have a lot of thoughts on that, but we don't need to get into it today. Um, so yeah, I focus on sort of the materials that I personally like. Um, I know that if I buy a wool sweater though, um, I'm probably not gonna wear it cause it's itchy for me. So if I'm buying wool, it needs to be like a coat with a lining or pants with a lining. So starting to learn those habits, like look at the materials of the things that you wear regularly or the things that you feel really good in and just put a list on your phone. Um, I, let's see, what else? Um, as far as the labels, when you're looking at it for, for what material it is, um, the, let's see if I can find a cool label um, just sitting here. Yeah, okay, let's use this one as an example. So this vintage dress, um, I, I like to look for these embroidered labels um, that have sort of, I guess, vintage design to them. And that's, that is hard to say, like this is what you should look for. But anything with a screen printed label is new, right? Like they didn't do screen printed labels 30 years ago. Um, maybe they did, 30 years ago, it was like the 90s. I still don't think they did. Anyway, I, if I'm looking for something from the 70s, 80s, or 90s, I'm or earlier, but that's hard to find at the thrift store, um, I'm looking for a label like this. And then uh, you can sometimes see where it was made. I like to do the made in the US stuff because oftentimes that's union made and that means that someone was paid a fair wage to make that garment. Um, this piece actually has a, a union made um, tag in it made in the US which is really cool um, so I'm looking for tags like this and if I see something that looks like it has a vintage sort of cut I will look at the tag and if it's a vintage cut but it says like Zara or a Target brand I'm not opposed to buying it but I have to consider if that is something that I want to invest in with knowing the quality is not as good as a vintage piece maybe so when I'm looking for tags, I'm looking for old tags like that. I'm looking for um, where it was made. Uh, although I, I, I'm not opposed to buying things that were made in other countries. It just seems like a lot of the older stuff that seems to be around here is made in the US. Um, I'm looking for union made, ta made tags, which are rare, but cool. So just kind of thinking about the piece 
as an investment in your wardrobe. Like, is this quality material that's gonna last? Is this constructed well and will it last? Am I gonna wear this? Um, if you see something like that dress on the rack, and again, you can't picture yourself wearing it immediately, but you're like, oh my God, it has a union made tag, has an old vintage tag, it's colorful, it's cool, it fits me. It doesn't mean you should buy it. And someone asked when I did the questions on Instagram, like, how do you, how do you let go of a piece um, that you feel like maybe you would never see again? And I, I think the question is, is a really good one. And you just have to be honest with yourself. Like, am I going to wear this? And I like the mindset shift of one, you could buy it and then you could see if you wear it. If not, you can give it to someone else who will maybe love it a little bit more. That's how I feel about some of the vintage pieces that I've invested in and then don't really reach for or like a formal wear dress. I wore it to a couple of weddings and I don't really want to wear it again or maybe something doesn't fit. It's time to give it a new owner, someone who will wear it and will reach for it and will appreciate it just as much as I did. Like it should be worn, they're clothes. Um, you know, they are collections and they are, they can be art pieces, but I think that we should give them the chance to live their lives. Um, so number one, you could buy it. Number two, you could really reflect like, am I going to wear this or should I leave this here for someone else to find this amazing gem? Because if it's not going to get used, let's give it a chance for someone else to enjoy it. That's kind of, that's kind of how I feel. So I am cycling through a lot of pieces in my closet a lot of the time. So back to the thrifting strategies, identify your wardrobe gaps, make a list of what you're looking for, um, figure out what sort of materials you like. You don't have to do the tag thing like I do, but that is something that I look for. And I'm not like browsing every single tag. I, I usually am drawn in by the color or the material first, um, because once you start doing this a little bit, you start to figure out like what you'll naturally reach for and which things you'll actually pull off and put in your cart. Um, and it, it comes with practice and so does understanding your personal style. And that's okay. Just consider it play and you don't have to get it right every time. Um, so the other thing I want to talk about is, is silhouettes. So let's use a silk skirt as an example. Um, I feel like right now there's the trend and it's i guess it's not a trend i mean it's a pretty classic shape of a silk skirt that's like sort of or dress that sort of bodycon with spaghetti straps i love how this looks on people and at the same time i know that anything bodycon i don't like how i feel in those items uh i don't feel like myself i have a, a narrow waist and wide hips and butt and so anything that's gonna fit my hips and butt um, is gonna if it's a bodycon shape, it's gonna be loose around um, the torso, and I I don't necessarily I could get it altered, I guess, um, but understanding what silhouettes work for me, and by work I mean what I feel good in, not what someone else says is flattering. When I say work, I mean like work for me and how I feel. And that's really important. And I talk a lot again about this in the dress for yourself course. I think that intentional shopping is so related to understanding your personal style and knowing what you feel good in. So again, just talking about that course because I put a lot of heart into it because it means so much to me. Um, but if I see something that's like trendy or, uh, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of it on the internet or in my Pinterest um, inspiration boards, if it's not something that I no, I'll feel comfortable wearing as far as the silhouette or the shape. Um, I don't get it. And sometimes that's passing on a really cool piece, but it doesn't make sense for me to get it. And I think uh, the same thing could be said for pieces that don't fit. Um, I will get things tailored. I have uh, like these silk pants here. I bought at the thrift store and got them tailored to fit my waist and cropped because I like a, a sort of a cropped formal pant look and so I'll get smaller alterations done like that um, especially if it's a cool material like that is a weird like shiny silk 
blue color that I haven't really seen much of. So I was like, these are sick. They're $6. I'm going to get them and I'll pay way more than that to get them tailored and that's fine. Um, but if something like really doesn't fit, I don't want to buy it aspirationally. And I've, I've talked about um, like aspirational shopping and, and planning and packing before in, in some of my previous videos. Um, but I, I approach shopping the same way. If it, if I can't quickly see what alteration would make it fit me immediately, like shortening the hem, tucking in the waist, um, or like sometimes like this, this skirt used to be a dress and the top was torn and I was like, I can turn this into a skirt. So I, I brought it to my tailor and she turned it into a skirt. It was perfect. Um, and she was able to take the waist out too. So if it's like a gathered dress, that's an easy thing to adjust to, to make a little bit bigger or smaller <clears throat> to fit you. So I won't buy things aspirationally also because I have ADHD and I, if I buy something and then I put it in my closet being like, okay, yes, I'm definitely going to go get this tailored soon. It'll sit there for years. And again, we want the clothes that we're buying to be worn and used. So I feel like that is a bunch of tips that I hope are helpful for you in, in more intentional shopping and thrifting. Um, I love, I love thrifting because I like finding pieces that are unique to me. I like finding pieces that are really high quality, well made, and I like the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> um, and I really, I, I know folks, every time I talk about thrifting in my closet and, and wardrobe, uh, folks always talk about overconsumption and that is absolutely valid. Um, I definitely don't need this many clothes, um, but I really see my clothes as tools for creative expression and play. So I compare it to an artist having a bunch of paintbrushes and paints or a carpenter having a bunch of tools and wood. This is my art. This is my creative play. And I am buying things that will last a lifetime, whether it's with me or with someone else, they're not gonna be thrown away. Like these pieces will be transferred to multiple owners if, if they move on from my closet. And if they stay with me, they'll last me a lifetime because I'm making sure that I'm investing in, in higher quality pieces. Um, and it feels really good to buy secondhand because these things already exist and we have enough of a crisis on our hands with, you know, the state of the world that even though buying secondhand stuff is not going to have an impact like, you know, reducing fossil fuel consumption, for example, but it still makes a difference and and polyester plastic is from fossil fuels so if i'm buying natural fibers that helps in a little bit um so yeah let me know what you think about these tips let me know if you find anything cool at the thrift store um per usual please subscribe like comment share um and let me know if you think it would be a good resource for me to create a sort of style ref reflection tool um, for your home style, personal style in your home. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. I am grateful for you. I hope you have a great rest of your day.